Welcome back to another episode of Famous Reality TV. And tonight, y'all, it went down on Jocelyn's Cabaret Las Vegas reunion part two. And allegedly, this may be the last reunion. Now, the gag is, allegedly, there was a lot of stuff that was cut out of this reunion. We didn't see the allegations that Riri placed on Jocelyn saying that she put her hands on her. That was not on film. And as well as whatever post been went on with Amber. Now, you all seen the preview last week, as well as on here, when you see them in the hallway on the side of that office desk. When it was a rumble going on there, you could see Jocelyn's hair. So, I don't know if Amber, uh, I don't think she actually hit Jocelyn because she did say, state that it was like a... I guess like a chop or something like that. It wasn't really a punch and she dropped her because she did say previously like it was like a chop or something like that or maybe a push. Whatever the case, Jocelyn ended up falling. But who she was actually tussling with right there in that moment was ballistic and you all really couldn't even see him because they both was on the ground and the security was standing behind them so we couldn't see none of that. So basically this whole dog on reunion, we didn't see much at all. But I'll just try to follow along, let you all know what happened. So, they started off, of course, with the girls going crazy and all of that. They still haven't brought Jocelyn now, so you got Diamond. She is extremely upset, hollering at Kay Capri. Then we got Amber over here, and then we got Raven. Then we got Jordan standing up. Now, I don't know why Jordan was standing up. I think somewhere in her spirit or something, she felt like she kind of wanted to support these girls at first. But Jordan is probably really not about that life like that. So she chose not to get in the midst of the, the swinging and stuff like that. But she definitely was standing on that side and was standing up. But I think she was having kind of second guesses about the situation. And then they got my girl, Jonisha, Aston coming out, baby. The Caribbean's coming out. She like, sit down, man. Like, y'all doing too much. Then you got Kay Capri calling lollipops, shark tails, and cockeyed. Baby, she almost took me out with that shark tails, though. So a couple of things they was pointing out, one of them to begin with, was the fact that Ballistic popped up on the stage, and you all did not see him walk out. He just happened to arise upon the stage. So that was a part, allegedly, that got cut out. I don't know the significance of it, but it was mentioned. And now we got uh, Diamond up on there questioning Raven, sounding like Ferrari to Pink, talking about, where was you? She's like, I'm right there. I was right there on the side of you, girl. Da, 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 da. You must feel like you got smashed or something, girl. You got to ask somebody where they at. I don't care about where you at, because if I'm talking to somebody, that's the only part you need to be paying attention to. You shouldn't even be really noticing if somebody on the side of you or not. So what Kay Capri was saying as far as the jumping, yeah. You did want to jump because you questioned her about where she was. It was a one-on-one. So why is that even a concern? But you can hear Raven or either Diamond in the background uh, at the beginning, a little bit after that rumble went on. Kay Capri was changing into her dress out of her uh, streetwear. And you can hear them in the background saying uh, they're going to punch Riri in her face. So, yeah, they pretty much did incriminate themselves. Maybe they forgot to cut that part out. But you can hear them saying that much. So Amber jumps over the couch, and y'all have old girl, the one that was doing the dog on jiu-jitsu or the UFC fighting. She didn't jump over the couch and running. I'm wondering to myself, girl, why is you acting like you are so scared at this point when you was up in there dropping people on their head, uh, Gaia, Gia, whatever her name is. Cut it out. Now, you got Amber trying to go around security, trying to get back at Diamond and stuff. Like, they can't even sit down and act doggone professional, like, for one moment to have a conversation. This really is not even a reunion. This is a royal rumble. Diamond talking about, here come boss lady, here come boss lady, act right, act right. And I'm like, yeah, y'all boss or whatever. So, K. Capri, she didn't went and got cured. She the only one had come since a couple of them. To put on something looking decent, you know, that looks the occasion. So she had a nice little black dress, had her little finger waves. And, of course, when she came out, um, Raven was like, girl, you stealing my style, blah, blah, blah. You trying to look like me, dead president, this, and the third. Girl, you stole Lexi Blow's style. So how in the world is somebody going to steal your style when the style was already made? Lexi Blow already stepped it. So, of course, in true Jocelyn style, she rolls up in the Rolls Royce. And gets out. Of course, she comes, does the same thing that she did to the season two girls. She points over there at their couch and says, those are the mad girls. So, you already know that's about to get the party popping. So, I believe it was Diamond. She was like, come over here telling uh, 
Amber to come over there. So Amber came over there. Of course, Diamond and Raven hopped up at the same time. So Amber get to fighting both of them. And then you got Jocelyn look like we couldn't see directly, but we could hear. So she walked up on Lexi Blow. So we hear Lexi Blow in the background. And Jocelyn saying, like, what you going to do? What you going to do? So they asked her what she going to do. And you can hear Lexi Blow to my nothing. Girl, you don't let nobody step to you. Now, Lexi Blow came on today, and she was saying her excuse for not popping back off on Jocelyn when Jocelyn, Jocelyn pushed her was that she was on the West Coast, and she lives on the East Coast, and she didn't want to get injured like the other girls and uh, manhandled because the other girls allegedly was getting manhandled by security. And she was saying, you know, she wasn't trying to get manhandled, and she wasn't trying to get hurt. She got her kids to worry about and other things to worry about. So she wasn't trying to do all of that. She was basically trying to have a conversation with Jocelyn to figure out why Jocelyn feels like she's fake and how does she switch sides. Now, Lexi Blow is saying Jocelyn feels like she switched sides because she's choosing not to fight on her side. She's choosing not to fight between the drama that's going on between the girls. That doesn't mean that she's fake or she switched sides in Lexi Blow's opinion. But at the end of the day, you put your hands on me, yeah, some hands is going back up on you. So... And you can see, like, bits and pieces of, of the hands going towards Riri Way, multiple hands. And I guess that's allegedly when she was being jumped by her attacker. So she says that it was Jocelyn, Diamond, and Raven. So we seen the hands going that way, flapping. So that's about as much as they showed of that part. So they basically, they didn't move. Well, K. Capri didn't left off the stage. She going to go change back into her street gear. You got Amber. She had been got off the stage. So they back there switching clothes and whatever they got going on. So you got Jocelyn standing in the front. And you got Raven and Diamond and the other girl, Lord, standing to the side. And I don't even know why she was standing up there like that, but she was. But they standing up there like they some doggone bodyguards. Somebody, like, where they at? Where they at? I'm looking like, what is going on? Like, this is a mess. It's a hot mess. It really is. It's ridiculous that you can't see women on the stage together to have some type of conversation. Like, it's never that serious. It isn't. But it can get serious once you get to the point of putting your hands on somebody. Because people have a right to protect themselves at that point. So, K. Capri then broke loose from security, and she then ran, hauled off right back to the dogs on stage, and she got to trying to rumble with Diamond them and stuff, and she couldn't get to them, so, of course, in Lollipop, so she got to spitting. She didn't spit multiple times. I don't know if it got on anybody, but Jocelyn was like, ugh, she nasty. K. Capri had it on her mind, y'all. She was like, I'm going to get to them one way or another. If I can't hit them, this spit going to hit them. <laughs> So Raven started hollering out about her $40. Allegedly, she let K. Capri hold $40 for whatever the case may be. She, so she hollering to my, I want my $40 bag. Jocelyn is talking about, because y'all remember uh, when they first came into the house, K. Capri was saying, you know, she was coming to do her thing. She wanted to dance. But she also stated that she had just got out of a relationship with her girlfriend. So she was just trying to forget about her and stuff like that. And Jocelyn brought up saying something about K. Capri be getting beat up by a girlfriend and stuff. So I don't know where she got that from but that's what came out of her mouth i'm like you know you don't play about stuff like that that ain't cool if that is the case so now we got k capri and amber still in the hallway because amber never has came back up on the stage to try to come towards the stage she already knows security gonna stop us so ain't no need to be trying to keep using your energy trying to run up on them because you're not gonna get there so Amber was like, she over it at this point. She like, call Jocelyn and I here. Like, I bet. I will fight her one-on-one -on -one right now. Like, what's good? So Amber wanted her one-on-one. -on -one. K. Capri was like, yeah, I just spit on y'all, and I spit on y'all again. Period. So Lemmy come out, of course, the CEO of Zeus, trying to put Jocelyn in her place, letting her know, you know, I'm about to set the tone right now. I'm going to need y'all to sit down and shut up because we're not going to do all this all night. So he talked them down enough to get them to get ready to come to the stage because Jocelyn been up there on the stage almost 10, 15, 20 minutes, however now. And she still ain't really said too much until she started her conversation. They got the going. There has been no dialogue at all thus far. And she clearly bothered because she can turn it around. You know, they got the little girls in the, um, the women, whatever, dancers, in the cages behind them. And she's going to turn around and tell the girl, can you quit clicking your heels? Ain't this girl getting paid to be up here? Uh... So, Brittany Renner started the dialogue, and she was like, you know, like, what's going on? Like, where are we going from here and stuff like that? And Jocelyn was like, you know, we on tour right now. I got me and these four girls, well, three girls now, but um, we're on tour. And so, you know, I've got them bookings outside of the show, 
But uh, Lexi Blow and Riri, they saying that they ain't seen no shows. Like, they say that they don't see nothing Diamond Lollipop or Raven is booking by themselves. And the other girl, you know, she backed up out of it, Jordan. So she's not even a part of it anymore. So it's just those three. But allegedly on the street, you know, ain't nobody seeing none of these solo bookings. So I don't know. Y'all let me know if you do. But uh, Jocelyn is stating that, you know, she gave all of the girls opportunities. And until she put the flyer out just showing those four girls on tour with her, it wasn't an issue. She's saying once she dropped that flyer showing who was going to be a part of the Jocelyn's Cabaret tour, that I guess she's saying Amber and K. Capri and the other girls got upset at that point. And that's where the drama stemmed from in her mind. So Jocelyn, and, you know, basically these girls are making bags of money as well as what she paid them. So she was asking them, like, you know, do I pay y'all good? They're like, yeah, you know, we make good money. So what she paid them may be good. But allegedly, based on Lexi Blow, they're not making no bags at the club. They only getting a couple ones. She was like, they probably getting like $80 a piece. <laughs> Pure night. Jocelyn said, you know, she feels like that she gave all of these girls millions of eyes to be on them she let them be able to be seen as far as promoting their stuff now like i say i do feel like amber ali she did take that and run with it she cooked on the show where the people were saying she didn't have on gloves or whatever the case may be they were saying that her food was good at the time now after the case they may have said something different but at that moment baby y'all was snacking on those um lamb chops in them crab legs yeah y'all was getting it so, um, I'm not understanding that, but I think she did take advantage of that. And I do think that this show did help Amber to grow her business. And it also probably helped Riri and Lexi Blow and uh, Kay Capri to get more bookings and things like that as well. And it's not the point about how it helped to promote them or how it helped to build their business. The point is, is how they feel like they was affected and how they were talked to and disrespected and stuff like that. That's the issue that they're having. I don't think nobody can deny truthfully that Jocelyn's show did not help them or elevate them at all. That would be a lot to say. So Janisha was like, you know, I do feel like they were supporting you and behind you, you know, at first, Jocelyn. And Jocelyn was like, no, you know, once they got online, she's calling uh old girl Cuckoo, which she is Cuckoo. And she was calling K. Capri, Dennis Rodman, and calling um, Tennessee a drunk. So she's like not going for it. Jocelyn don't care. Once they said whatever they want to say about her, she got it out for them. Now, the things that they were saying, it may have been true. It may not have been true. But basically, if you coming against Jocelyn, it's going to cost you. She feel like that's her show. She is the boss. So ain't no talking about nothing bad, negative about her, even if it is true. And that's crazy because everybody should be able to take criticism, especially if it is correctly directed. If somebody feel disrespected, you can't tell them that they don't. You can't. And everybody is not going to kiss your butt for an opportunity or for millions of eyes or for views or cash or none of that. Some people like their uh, respect more than cash. And that's just what it is coming from that other side of the couch, as far as I see. Now, Hennessy, I don't know. Hennessy, uh, as far as Raven was saying, you know, she didn't get a lot of camera time. And this is her last 15 minutes. So they're going to let her have it. Um, and she really didn't get a lot of camera time. I feel like she uh, was behind... Amber a lot and Amber could have showed her a little more dignity and respect as well so uh she did get into the mix with Raven on here so I could say you know she stood up for herself and she stood up for who she was standing up with so I mean I guess she came to do what she came to do we knew the girl couldn't dance she really can't so uh like people were saying they felt like Jocelyn just put anybody on the show people that couldn't even dance just to cause drama she knew that Wet Wet wasn't like a stripper type dancer she also knew Amber wasn't a stripper type dancer but like I stated previous several times before Amber is a good dancer she does choreography to the T she may not be a stripper but she do know how to dance as far as professional and choreography as well as Riri, as well as Jordan, as well as Lexi Blow. Uh, a lot of these girls can dance. Like, I don't think the talent was the issue. Maybe with a couple of them, but majority of them, the talent was not the issue. It was the respect factor. Now, Jocelyn, she got this telling Amber that she said something about a child after she let her dusty butt in her penthouse. Amber was like, what did I say about your child? I never said nothing about your child. 
And then so Jocelyn was like, what you want to do? Or whatever the case may be. So they both jumped up, tried to swing at each other, and it was immediately halted by security, of course, as well as Raven. Them jumped up as well, telling Amber she wasn't about to touch Jocelyn. Immediately, Ballistic felt some type of way. And you can hear him in the background saying, uh, she live with me. She'll do this to you. That this then the third. Like, be quiet. You shouldn't even be in female stuff. Jocelyn got two girls that seem like they behind her. I, I guess you could say three. Three girls behind her. And then on this side, you got three girls because Riri one doing nothing. Lexi Blow one doing nothing. Only K Capri, Hennessy, and Amber. So why was your commentary even necessary? I understand this your woman, but he must be removed from the stage, period. Why is he there? And at this point, you know, Riri is no longer on the stage. But uh, right after they tried to break uh, Amber and Jocelyn up, you can hear a snippet of sound was broken. And Raven was like, oh, it is uh, with a little sad face and stuff. So, And I guess uh, Lexi Blow nails got broken that quick somehow because when Raven ran up on Amber, I don't know if she pushed her, punched her. Something happened to the point where they fell on Lexi Blow. So I guess that's how her nails ended up getting broken some kind of way. So Amber was telling Jocelyn, you know, you too old for this stuff. She told me, I'm 35. I'm 35. It ended up throwing water all on Amber. They letting her throw water on the girl, but they still got security guarding her while they holding Amber back, of course. So Amber's still trying to get to Jocelyn. It wasn't happening. So Jocelyn come over and she pushes Lexi Blow and she telling her, you know, you a traitor. Get out. Get out. You traded. You a traitor. And she like, I never traded. I never traded. She said he continuously saying I never traded. After you say I never traded, you need to be saying I never traded. You was the one star wanting to disrespect me, want to talk to me funny because of blase, blase because you felt like I supposed to be doing this, new and that. Like, speak your mind. Not no, I never traded. I never traded. Like, I'm not understanding the conversation, the dialogue. So you got Jocelyn in the background talking to Brittany Renner and she was, I guess Brittany asked her about the child situation and it sounds like all Jocelyn was telling her, you know, that Amber had mentioned that she met Bunny Bella. I don't know what more she said about her, but I think she just mentioned that she met her. I don't know if she put any emphasis on it or anything and Jocelyn was like, you know, don't talk about my daughter. I guess she didn't want her to mention her daughter, period, at all. And she was like, you know, the only reason you even seen my daughter was because you came to my penthouse. So I don't get the point of that. If she said anything extra, I don't know, but as far as the conversation that I heard on the show, on the reunion, she didn't really say anything as far as just, you know, she seen her or she met her there. And to me, that is not necessarily talking about her. It's just mentioning that I seen her. But I guess I can kind of understand, like, why I even bring the child up, period. So I can kind of understand that part, like, especially when y'all already in heated debates and arguments, like, what is the point of you bringing up my child, period? My child don't have anything to do with this. So she should have never came up at all, period. So Riri finally returned to the stage. Y'all had on her black leather looking real fly. And, you know, Kay Capri, she was like, yes, baby, you look good. That's why she mad. Because y'all already know uh, the house that they lived in, Riri actually allegedly hooked Jocelyn up with. So it was never Jocelyn's house. It was allegedly one of Riri's friend's houses that she told Jocelyn about, and that's how she got the hookup with the house. And Riri was saying, you know, she had pictures of her friend in front of the house and stuff like that. And she also was saying, you know, that she hooked Jocelyn up with places to go and shop and eat and, and told her a lot of stuff about Las Vegas because Jocelyn didn't even know anything about Las Vegas. Riri actually is from and lives in Vegas. But Jocelyn does now have residency there. And I think, you know, that club is official. It's actually, you know, Jocelyn's cabaret. So she does have a permanent residency there now. But allegedly, Riri uh, already had designers, uh, a BMW or Mercedes, whatever kind of car she has, and uh, purses, heels, clothes like that, and the hookup on a lot of things. So she wasn't one of them, basically. So Amber, apparently, as far as what I see, looked like she went around security and she finally got that lick that she wanted to look like or whatever she got off of Jocelyn. But that was pretty much all she wrote. And the next thing, all you see is these security guards blocking the rear and you can hear them saying ballistic, ballistic. So at that point, I guess, you know, that's when her and ballistic got to going at each other. He wasn't having it. Now you got Lollipop and Kay Capri going at it again. And you can hear somebody in the background. I would suppose that it was Raven, but I think, I don't know why they were showing um, Amber, it looked like. But uh, you can hear somebody in the background saying, get her Lollipop, get her Lollipop. 
So now you got Jocelyn telling security, let my man go, let Ballista go. Why is y'all holding him? Don't hold him. All this and that girl after he just been putting his hands up on people. Now he can't be held. You are crazy. So after all of that went on, you know, they pretty much cut the lights down on the show. And um, they were saying at the end, you know, I feel like it is over. But something is telling me we may get a part three. I don't know, because allegedly girls have to go to the hospital. And of course, they have to literally shut everything down, get everybody moved out of there and stuff like that. So maybe we will get a part three, which will be nothing but basically the aftermath of people leaving and, and talking about what just occurred. Because it don't look like they're going to get these girls back on the stage. That's pretty much done with. So there is a 50-50 chance that we'll get a part three. So you all let me know what y'all think about this doggone reunion or this, uh, I don't even know what you want to call it. But make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to Famous Reality TV and click that notification bell because this is about to get real.